All right, Jonathan Reed is the CEO of Ecotality. Do I have that right, Jonathan? You're joining us from a hot Phoenix, Arizona. That's right, Jenna, Ecotality. Okay, so what exactly is Ecotality? Uh, Ecotality is a company that's focused primarily on developing electric transportation solutions um, and providing infrastructure for electric transportation and electric vehicles. Now, the electric vehicles, um, President Obama has been pushing for, of course, a new kind of cars, the change that he wants for the future, for the economy. These electric cars, we're starting to see them actually evolve. Nissan's going to be putting one out in 2010, and you're going to work specifically with Nissan on this and, and, and people who are going to use these electric cars, correct? Absolutely. We're going to be working with Nissan, but we're also going to be building out electric infrastructure in five different markets. Um, and this electric infrastructure will be usable by any of the uh, electric vehicles that come out. We know that GM is, is launching, Chrysler is launching, Ford is launching electric vehicles, and then there's a host of other players from overseas that are bringing um, electric vehicles. So the, really the time has come for electric vehicles, and they're going to be very much a part of our landscape. You know, uh, we hear about all the different innovation on the alternative energy side, and it seems like the different automakers are really battling it out to, um, on the one hand, make sure that they have the best innovation out there. On the other hand, not innovate so wildly that they can't participate in infrastructure once it's actually up and running, or parts like batteries that are out there. So do you have to go to each automaker, or do you have to go to each company and, and try, to f try to have a relationship with each of them, or do they come to you? How does that work? Well, they're, they're coming to us, which is a wonderful position to be in. Uh, this, uh, we recently got a grant yesterday for $99.8 million from the, uh, in the stimulus program that, that validates our technology. We're the leader in fast charging, uh, which will allow a vehicle to be charged in, in 10 to 20 minutes uh, while you're getting a latte or, or, or picking up your prescription at the drugstore. So um, the vehicle manufacturers are coming to us, and the great thing is that this time round on electric vehicles, there is a standardization so that all the vehicles are going to be using the same plugs and the same outlets uh, so that infrastructure put in anywhere in the country is going to be able to be used uniformly by all vehicle manufacturers. Uh, we had a, it's a good question here from one of our chatters who said, well, we talk about plug-in cars, we talk about interchangeable batteries. Exactly how is this going to work and how far can these cars go before I have to find another station and plug my car in before I can go again? Well, currently the, the Nissan vehicle is going to have a range of, of, of 100 miles, um, but we see battery technology really uh, taking off over the next few years, uh, in part from the stimulus program that's, that's pushing American battery makers, um, but just in the general growth of the batteries, so that 100 miles to, um, uh, to 200 miles is going to be an easy leap. Um, and, and if you put that in, into proper reference, uh, most Americans, 90% of Americans drive less than 40 miles a day with their vehicle. So um, most Americans aren't going to run out of range with a 100-mile range vehicle. And then building out a rich but, infrastructure. But if I want uh, to have a car that I can go somewhere else, if I want to go away for the weekend, am I going to have to have two cars, one that I do to drive to work, or the other one if I want to go 100 miles? Uh, no, it's, it's, uh, that's part of what we do, is we're building out the infrastructure of public charge stations that would allow you to recharge in 10 to 20 minutes so that, uh, for instance, in between Tucson and Phoenix, we'll be putting waypoints um, in, in fast food locations and malls so that you can stop, have a quick bite, recharge, and carry on down, so, the, down the freeway. So, glad you brought up infrastructure. Chad wants to know, how do you charge for the energy the car uses when they're plugged in in a public place? We think about, you know, when we talk about each of us using right. electricity in the grid here in New York City, it seems like we have a rate. So is that is there going to be free? a flat rate? <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> well, Why, <it's> <laughs> maybe this could be with our housing bills. What do you think? Well, well, surprise, surprise. It might be very well be free because uh, we envision a, a, an infrastructure where retailers are going to pay for that electricity. It's between 60 and and a dollar twenty uh, to have you come to their retail location. So there is a very good chance that that uh, while we'll ultimately pay for it, uh, you could be plugging in at retail locations for free. So I could be spending five dollars for a latte at Starbucks, right. but then I could maybe plug in my uh, yeah, my free. car for a cheaper <laughs> cheaper price than if I went to McDonald's. It, it, that presents a very interesting idea, though, because uh, I mean, right. hey, we all know the American consumer likes to shop, and you got to go some places. So if you're going to get coffee anyways, why not go to the coffee shop that's going to allow you free 
energy for your car. But you have to get a coffee every hundred miles. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, coffee and five dollar coffee, fifty miles. We'll give you. Yeah, that one. there you go. <laughs> so Tom was asking again on the on the board about the infrastructure, uh, and a lot of a lot of folks are weighing in on that. How far away? I mean, what's really the timeline for this? Because just a couple years ago, we were talking about ethanol is where we're going to go, and we need ethanol stations, and then of course hydrogen is still talk, the talk of the town too. So there could be hydrogen stations. So are we going to have all these different options, and, and how, how far I, out are we? I, we're going to have infrastructure on the ground and vehicles on the ground by fourth quarter of next year. Uh, we're rolling out 5,000 vehicles and 12,750 charge stations, which is the largest uh, vehicle and in infrastructure rollout in the history uh, for electric vehicles. And the one thing you have to remember is electricity is the lifeblood of civilization. You're never that far from it. Um, essentially what we're doing is extending a well-built-out infrastructure, the electric grid, to be available for uh, use in, in, in vehicles. So it's not as capital intensive um, as it is to build out an ethanol or a, uh, a hydrogen infrastructure. So the grid is ready for this. If, I, if, if in three years Americans love the Volt and they love the Nissan and all of a sudden we have all these electric cars running around, the grid's fine? We're not going to have the grid, is, the grid like will be. The grid will be fine. Uh, we work with, as much as we work with the vehicle manufacturers, we're working with um, electric utilities around the nation to help them get ready. We're consultants for uh, a number of the major utilities, both in this country and in other countries. So uh, we're reaching out, and, and we are the, the experts in, in um, building EV microclimates and, and helping people figure out what's necessary for building to charge infrastructures. How much is one of these Nissans, by the way? That's what one of our uh, uh, the Nissan. Uh, the Nissan is expected to be at the same price point as a Prius. Do you expect certain areas of the country to be up and ready for it to support this better? Chris out in L.A. says, listen, the grid in California is not fine for this. That's going to take more work. We know people drive longer distances, you know, as far as commuters out in California. So, you know, if you compare that to a different part of the country, is, is it going to be uneven? I think it's going to be uneven. Let's mm -hmm. face it, a, uh, somebody that wants to drive 400 miles and tow his boat up to the lake, um, electric transportation is not necessarily going to be for him. Uh, but cities where you have uh, uh, reasonable commutes, places like Portland and Seattle, um, on east East Coast, some of the Florida cities, all up the, and down the eastern seaboard, where the drive range isn't that, that great, um, they're going to be quickly adapted, and, and especially commuter uh, type of, of situations. One other question, Jonathan. What if... I get in a traffic jam, and I run out of electricity. What do I do? You're not supposed to do that. Well, you're going to do the same thing you do when you run out of gas. Is AAA going to be AAA. able to help me out? I mean, <laughs> oddly enough, we're in discussions with AAA hey, uh, cool. about helping them. Yeah. So uh, it, it's going to it, it is going to be ubiquitous. Um, charge stations and electric cars are going to be uh, a very much a part of the solution, not the entire solution, right. but part of the solution. And and we're we're here putting that infrastructure in. Final thought here, what, what about jobs? Uh, we know Arizona's been hit heavily with the housing market there. I mean, everywhere really has. But it, w are you hiring? What, are you looking to expand? Oh, we're absolutely. We, we expect to add 750 new jobs over the uh, next year to two, three years. Um, on top of that, uh, the, the Nissan program uh, for electric vehicles will add another 5,000 jobs. So um, we, we're very much jobs driven and see that, that infrastructure installation, maintenance is going to be a really a, a green uh, a job bank uh, and a green industry that's not going to be a one-time industry. But it's going, we're going to be training people on how to install these and, and, and how to maintain electric vehicles, how to maintain the charge stations. Do you go to Michigan so to, to recruit? I mean, do you go to the places that where the auto workers are, are laid off? Is that, is that the type of training or a trained employee that you want? Or are you looking for someone with different training? Training that needs to, to get something new? Well, we're absolutely looking for, for skilled um, uh, vehicle technicians, for skilled uh, electricians, and um, uh, engineers of all sorts. So we're, we're reaching out nationwide uh, Chad, for our U.S. Chad wants to know where he sends his resume. <laughs> hey, these, our That's viewers right. are very passionate about this. A lot of people this. want to work. Uh, where, where, what do they do? WWW. W, 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 ecotality.com. We have a careers page, and we'd love to get resumes. All right. Well, we, hey, keep us up to date. If we, if we have a match here, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Jonathan Reed, I appreciate it again. Uh, we're going to check in with you soon. It sounds very interesting, and it's really lighting up our, our comment board here, so we appreciate uh, having you on today. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jonathan.
Would you drive an electric car? I don't know. Seriously, I'm worried about it. I'm really? driving around and I get behind something and then all of a sudden there's an accident ahead. And Dave I'm, has I'm, a, new, a, new, a new baby too, right? So he has a little bit more That's concern, right? right? I don't, think, I don't have to plug in the car seat. Though. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone. That's right. right. Shout out to Jack. One month old. Shout out to Jack.